Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer on state-of-the-art heart attack, stroke, and, uh, car and uh, cancer prevention. Uh, a couple of days ago, we recorded a, uh, a video on heptoglobin 2. Maybe I got a little too deep, maybe I need to remake it, but we got, I enjoyed it and we had a lot of fun talking about uh, why heptoglobin 2 is the major risk for diabetics that and being uh, having their glucose out of control. Uh, just remember, haptoglobin 2 is a genetic variation. Haptoglobin usually cleans up hemoglobin that's been uh, spilled from old red blood cells. And it, um, haptoglobin 2 doesn't work very well. So you have this oxidized hemoglobin lying around, rusting or oxidizing the tissue in a diabetic. Why you don't see it as much of a problem in um, in non-diabetics, I don't really know. I will say this, it's, that part's not totally true. There is a precursor for haptoglobin 2, 2 molecule called zonulin. That is related to inflammatory disease as well. We'll have another video on zonulin later. Uh, but today's uh, um, video in the series on cardiovascular genetics is 9P21. I've referred many times to my friends and mentors, Bradley Bale and Amy Donine. They wrote the book, Beat the Heart Attack Gene. The gene they're referring to in this title is 9P21. Now, <clears throat> what does that mean? It's on the ninth chromosome and it's in the P21 location. That, um, that location has been known for a while for several issues. Uh, melanoma, other cancers, uh, and diabetes. In 2007, there were several genetic studies that showed that 9P21 uh, creates risk for heart attack and stroke. It appears to create risk um, in mechanisms other than association with diabetes, but diabetes alone would be enough. As you know, diabetes is our biggest growing risk uh, factor for heart attack and stroke. Now, <clears throat> uh, maybe you're thinking, well, you know, uh, I probably don't have that. That's probably unusual. Well, I personally have it. I'm homozygous for it, so I've got a lot of risk for it. Um, and guess what? The alleles, the allele frequency is 50-50. So in other words, one half of the human gene pool has the dangerous type of 9P21. So that in and of itself is a little bit of an oversimplification, but again, I've carried us uh, too far down the road maybe already in terms of understanding it. The, bo the bottom line though is very, very many of us, over half of us, have some association with 9P21, the heart attack gene. So it's sort of like in the movie, uh, I think it was Dirty Harry, and he points the gun at, at the, the fellow's face and he said, are you feeling lucky? Um, we're not very lucky with 9P21. Now, <clears throat> here is a another piece of information, or maybe a, an image, which helps us see a couple of things. As you see, this is chromosome number 9, and this is location P21. As these uh, genes do, they, uh, they unravel, and then they become transcribed. This is one, uh, one potential mechanism for the increase in risk. Um, I can tell you, more recent um, uh, research would indicate that this may be more of a control gene. In other words, it actually exerts its uh, problems by controlling the, uh, the demonstration and the transcription of other genes within the genome. Um, there's some other information about it as well. Once you get to a certain uh, level of plaque, it doesn't appear to have much of a, it doesn't appear to create much of a difference. So what does that mean? It appears that uh, 9P21 is more of an initiator 
as opposed to uh, something that completes and causes the risk. Uh, as you may remember, with the work that we do in the bail donating community and, other, and some other cardiovascular prevention communities, it's pretty clear that we can decrease uh, heart attack and stroke risk. We can freeze and uh, stop the inflammatory process associated with um, heart attack and stroke. Remember the, where a plaque is, is laid down and remember that the real problem here is inflamed plaque with the right lifestyle, with the right medications, with the uh, right uh, diet and exercise, you can slow your plaque down, even if you've got 9P21. In fact, see one of my other videos, my own CIMT indicated I had significant plaque. I've been able to not only stabilize that plaque, but I've also been able to shrink it dramatically. Again, using the right preventive techniques. Thank you.